So I had a few goals for this. The the main thing was just to have a spot that I could come down and play and relax in. I used to have to drive 30, 45 minutes to the spot that I was in before in San Diego, one way. And then I would work there till midnight and then I would have to drive 30 or 40 minutes back. And this, I can just walk downstairs. And it's um, like, I couldn't ask for anything more. The main focus of, that we had was on isolation because we got a family right upstairs and kids go to bed early. And so we did a room within a room. I didn't actually think that it was going to be that good because you don't know when you're building it. You know in theory, or at least I didn't, you probably did. And it wasn't until we got the doors in uh, and closed those that we we saw just how how powerful the isolation was. Yeah, I know we did the early simulations and giving you some audio samples. It's always nice when all those calculations and, and plans really work. It's a it's a good demo too. Like if people come over, you can shut one door and they're pretty amazed and then you shut the other door and it's dead silent and it's a hundred decibels in here. Uh, it's, a, it's a pretty amazing thing. The basement had nine foot ceilings. Uh, so we were, we were pretty good there, but you know, Two layers of 5 8 drywall and a uh, hanging ceiling gets pretty low. And it's really one of the places we need most isolating because everywhere else is basement. So I wanted to get as much isolation in the ceiling as possible and as much ceiling height. And the kinetics uh, were, would bring the ceiling down if we did a true joist ceiling with two layers of drywall, it would have been a really low ceiling in here. Yeah. And then I know that you had, had done some research on the inverted ceiling and um, definitely things I've come across before as well. We built out, instead of 16 inches on center for the spans, we, we built them 32 inches and doubled them up and then put the drywall in a cell and then put the cell into those spaces. And in that negative space, we were able to put treatment. But it's actually just about as labor intensive as those kinetic clips are. And so I think in general, it came out to about the same cost because the, the labor plus the cost of the clips equal the slightly higher labor of creating the inverse ceiling. And you get a higher ceiling height and you get better isolation. Yeah, we modeled everything. and I remember sending you audio clips with our sound isolation simulator and say, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? The clips, I believe it was like mid to high 60s for our STC rating, but we were in the 70s with, with this configuration. Yeah. Um, so it really helped a lot with the low end as well, being able to completely separate it from those, those ceiling joists that were up there already. This isolation is it's great. I mean, it can be unbearably loud in here and you can walk into the room just above it and everything has to be off and you have to have your ear against the floor to hear anything. I know too, like when we were, um, looking at spaces in the basement we we're potentially looking over here or in this space and and the unique geometry of this space was a challenge you know everyone strives symmetry uh, for, for and and that's great to have when you can get it yeah and it had this space which is awkwardly laid out there's no straight angle in this house and then there's a space in back that is more rectangular and probably would be better for sound but it was smaller also had a lot of mechanical above it and this space had windows, and so now we have three windows that give a lot of natural light. Yeah. Sometimes too much natural light, but I've never been in a space, like a recording space or a rehearsal space that had natural light. It's always been yeah, it's always shut a, up. A and dungeon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it makes a huge difference, especially I use this for a home office too, and, uh, and being able to turn the lights off and just have natural light is amazing. You know, having an angled wall like you have, like you're sitting against there, definitely breaks up the space modally. Uh, it's not, not uh, as uh, predictable as a rectangular space is going to be, but it also distributes the room modes a little bit nicer because you're not uh, dealing with really set dimensions uh, as far as the parallel surfaces go. I'm not a professional mixer. I'm not doing mastering. Uh, this isn't a super critical listening environment. Um, it's really a creative environment more than anything. And if, if I want something mixed or mastered, I shouldn't be the one doing it anyway. There's people that are way better at it than I am. 
the concern of having symmetry in the room was uh, was there, but it just wasn't in the cards for us. And so once that gets written off, you work with, with what you can. That allows us to take some liberties with the, the shape of the room and, and know that it's still gonna be amazing, but uh, maybe you know the left and right speaker response might, might be a little different or your reflections coming from your left and right is not going to be timed perfectly. Also with the way that we treated the room, uh, we tried to balance it out with treatments. Um, you can't totally do that and, and overcome geometry, but we were just doing a listening session just a little bit ago and it, it sounds great in here. I've been in other spaces that are the traditional rectangular space or angled walls that are, are symmetrical. And uh, uh, definitely the space is on par with, with a lot of those. So. I mean, imaging is straight down the center and I mean, it's a fairly flat response in here, which is really all, all I need. It's probably more than I need. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go into Matt's studio now and uh, point out some of the details of the acoustical treatment. And uh, follow me. Pretty amazing isolation that we have there with the double doors from ISO store, um, uh, coupled with the room within a room uh, setup that we have going on here, multiple layers of drywall. I mean, the contractors did a great job implementing the plans. Right here in this alcove, we, we mentioned about how the geometry of the room is a little little awkward uh, to start with, but um, really functions nicely. We've got this alcove here that is a little bit more lively, so if you wanted to, to record acoustic guitar or some percussion back here, it would work nicely. This panel here uh, has a uh, perforated facing to it, so it's it's done with a stretch fabric system, but the perforated facing gives you, you know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 to 40 percent increase in low frequency absorption, but is half as effective in the high end, and so it doesn't create too dead of a space. So it's really nice to have that there. We've got some uh, operable windows uh, from uh, soundproofwindows.com uh, that it allows us to uh, um, have access to this, and, and by code you need that in a basement. Uh, we also have uh, just some nice wood diffusers that were, were built for the back wall here and um, it, it's, uh, it matches the desk and, and all the wood that is in here, just a really nice seamless uh, transition with, with the acoustical treatments and the furniture. Um, around here, we actually have a soffit base trap, so all the black uh, that you see around the room is uh, filled with insulation and wrapped in fabric, and so really helping with tangential modes and, and helping control that low end uh, and, and make it real nice and consistent throughout the space. Uh, there's also recessed lights that you see here, which you can't get that look by penetrating the isolation ceiling because then you ruin how much isolation you're going to get. But you can have the recessed look if you built it into base traps and treatments like this. Um, back in this corner, we kind of designed it to be more of a uh, recording space, um, uh, more of a, a, a dead recording space. So if you want to do vocals, you can step back here in this corner, uh, have a little bit of flexibility to, to set up instruments and amps and, and such. Uh, we have the mini split system that is uh, on the wall here. Um, mini splits are great because you don't have all the ductwork that's going to uh, come in and out of the room that could potentially harm your isolation. And since isolation was such a, a big deal uh, on this project and, and a really high priority, uh, we went with a mini split system uh, with some diffusers there below there. Um, so we've got some corner traps in the front corners here that uh, were, were custom built with the stretch fabric system as well. I mean, Matt did a great job. Uh, implementing all this. He, he hadn't done it before, uh, but it looks really clean and uh, we got the treatment where we need it to go. Um, the cloud here uh, is, is all was built within the space, uh, Matt was telling us earlier, and he lifted it himself and, and suspended it from the ceiling so there's an air gap above it. Um, there's also some, some nice uh, LED lighting that uh, um, you know gives some different ambience and, and, and mood in here and recessed lights to help light up the desk. Um, you know, also some more windows here. These aren't operable, but they are uh, uh, doing their job because just having exterior windows on its, uh, its own would be a, a weak point in that isolation system. But this laminated glass separated by an airspace uh, really helps to, to control that. And uh, yeah, just overall, really great job. I mean, it's, it's so cool to see the space come to life and, and uh, going from empty basement to plans and renderings and then seeing it uh, come full circle. Um, it's a really, really great space to be in. I moved out here to Indiana to work at Sweetwater, 
Uh, and Gavin is a, is a huge friend of Sweetwater. We come out and teach there all the time. And I actually, I knew I was gonna build a space. Uh, I knew what entails building a space and I knew that every detail counts, especially if you want the isolation that I was shooting for. I knew that there was more than I know. Uh, and if I, if I went into it blind or at least uh, with my own research, I could do a good job, but it's one of those things that uh, you really need someone with experience if you want to get the, the highest quality of isolation. So I asked Dave Stewart, who's our, uh, our chief marketing officer, hey, I'm, I think I'm gonna build this studio. Do you know anybody? And he said, yeah, Gavin is a huge uh, friend of Sweetwater. Reach out to him, here's his number. Yeah. Um, and reached out to you and talked to you. And, and I think we, we connected really quickly and uh, there just wasn't, there wasn't another option. And you did a great job. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm glad we partnered on it. If I had done it on my own, I probably could have built a fairly isolated room, uh, but it wouldn't have looked like this. Uh, it, it wouldn't have been as isolating as it, as it is, because I probably just would have used regular doors. And sure. I definitely wouldn't have the acoustic treatment that I have in here now. Uh, and so having the, the expertise behind it to say, this is, this is not only how to make it sound good, but this is how to make it look good, uh, went a long way. What I think is really nice about uh, how we design the space is it's, it's really pretty dead and controlled over the, uh, the piano by the monitors, and it's got some liveliness over here. So um, it's kind of a split room effect, and it's got even more liveliness in the little uh, closet area. Yeah. I really like the wall color in here, and so I got used to a lot of that color, and I knew that it was mostly going to be covered up. But you know, the renderings were a big help and we were able to, to, to pick the right fabric colors that we wanted uh, so that the end result uh, still looked cohesive, and nice, even though it's turned out mostly gray instead of that blue, but there's, uh, it's, it's a really well designed and like hot looking space. Yeah. I think you did a great job with, with selecting colors and um, with the renderings that were provided. Like I know we went through some different iterations and ch let's change this, let's change that. Really kind of helped dial it in. We were originally going to go with a white ceiling, which I think would have looked great also. Uh, but with white fabric, you need the scrim under it. And that was, I think, like another two or $3,000 to, to do the scrim. And so, I, you know, Oscar sent 15 or 16 different variations of, you could do this on the ceiling, you could do this on the panels, and you could do this on the soffits. Yeah. Uh, and we could really narrow it down uh, and see what it was gonna look like and see what the color combos would look like pretty easily. The renderings, I think, helped a lot because that was sort of a North Star to work towards. Uh, and I built everything in here myself. I built all the soffits and the ceiling cloud and uh, did all the tracks for the fabric and hung all the fabric and built all the uh, uh, acoustic panels. Um, and so having a 3D rendering, knowing this is what it's going to look like and these are the dimensions and this is what you can work towards was really helpful for me as someone building this stuff. I think with the diffusers on the walls, um, they're really kind of the eye-catching piece uh, of the room. And um, you did a great job with that. I know that you, you guys built them here locally. The guy who came to frame this room, his name is Jake. And we started talking about the desk and, and I was looking at studio desks at that point. Um, and he said, I, I can build your desk. Uh, and so we designed the desk together. Uh, it's made out of sapili, uh, which I think really matches the, the blue and, and the other colors that we picked. Um, and then he had uh, some leftover lumber and I sent him a design for the sidecar and he built the sidecar too. Um, and then when I was looking at diffusers, he said, I can, I can build the diffusers for you. So we designed the desk and the sidecar and the diffusers. Uh, I did all the math for him and, and he put them together. Yeah, it's really nice because you know sometimes you're you're getting different pieces from different suppliers, and the the wood grain may not look exactly the same or the stain. And so with this, the same person doing all of it, it's really amazing. And the desk too. It's I, we were talking about it earlier, um, how it kind of the top moves and the drawer comes out. I mean, all those little details, um, just like logistically in your studio, it makes it work really nicely. What I love about it too is that we had designed out the mixed position to be right at the edge of the desk because most people are working at the edge of the desk and the beauty of that top moving is that when you pull out your drawer of your keyboard you're not moving back another foot 
15 inches and now you're outside of the sweet spot. So it's it's great design and it's really, really cool. Yeah, and uh, I know we were talking earlier, you pull out any sort of keyboard tray in any of these desks and there's no, you can't get rid of the wobble unless you put new stands down. Yeah. Uh, and the ability to just push the top back um, makes everything as stable as it can be. And so, I mean, it's like playing on a grand piano, you know, it's it's as stable as you can get. I mean, I've never had a space like this before. This is something that's that's built in a way that is, is comfortable and feels like home and feels like a creative space. And I think we put a lot of effort in the front end of this, making sure that it was going to feel like a cozy, creative space. And so, number one, I just like, being down here. I mean, it's just a nice spot to hang out and sit. Um, and uh, it's treated really well, so it sounds really good in here. Uh, so you can kind of gather your thoughts really easily. Um, and all that translates just into creativity. And so to be able to come down here and say like, I have three hours that I want to dedicate to making music and being creative and seeing what happens. If you're in a space that uh, uh, that helps bring that out, it uh, does some amazing things. It's definitely the most controlled room outside of a professional studio that I've ever been in. Um, but the main thing is it's just it, being in a space that is uh, inducive to being creative makes you creative. Uh, and so, I mean, I have a longer list of songs in progress than I've ever had just because I like being here and I like the sound of it. Uh, uh, and it's just a great spot to be.